Uh, this is Jerry Bailey. I'm the president of Petrotech Energy. Very excited today to have Mr. Bailey, Dr. Jerry Bailey with us. And first off, uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about your company uh, before we get into this exciting stuff that's happening in Utah. But I want to preface that I, I saw your guys' company was named number two in a list of uh, top companies to keep an eye on. And like GE was in there and a uh, Oh, I think Halliburton, Intel. It was a number of companies, and they mentioned yours, uh, that you guys have some huge potential going on. So uh, thank you for joining us here. And talk to me a little bit about your company and kind of what you guys have percolating there. Well, that's a very complimentary uh, uh, thought coming about. Uh, we may be small, but we certainly uh, have a great potential, it appears. Um the, th the thing about Petrotech Energy is that uh, we have come up with a technology that heretofore no one had to extract the oil out of the sands, uh, most notably you know, the oil sands in Utah, which is more than half of all the sands in the United States. Um, I'm a former president of Exxon. I was president of the Arabian Gulf region. And um, uh, after my retirement there, uh, Petrotech got a hold of me and said they needed an oil man in This is one of those unique stories, in my opinion, that's happening in the uh, oil and gas world. I've referenced this in my program many times that uh, talking with a, a James Volker from Whiting and a Harold Ham from Continental and John Gibson, former chairman of, of One Oak, and they mentioned to me in interviews that they've essentially had to rewrite their business plan. Technology has changed so much that oil and gas companies are rewriting their business plan. And they're not exaggerating. They're actually telling the truth. And this is a, one of those companies, this Petrotech seems like one of those disruptors that creates a new flow in the energy business. And I wanted to ask you, and t tell me if this makes sense or I'm off my rocker here, but did you guys start out as an energy company and develop the technology? Or were you guys a technology company that became an energy company? Does that make sense? Well, if you, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, we ended up with the technology and decided to get into energy. The company goes back further than my involvement, which I've been around about five years. And before that, it was working as a gasoline distribution uh, company in Southern California. And along the way, some of the uh, uh, principals and founders came across this technology, and uh, they saw it as a, uh, you know, they had the vision to see this as a good opportunity, and they got a hold of it, and they said, hey, this is uh, something we should really go after. So we spun off the uh, distribution company and really now focused on uh, the energy part. But your points are, are well made in that the, um, the necessity for more and more energy drives these new technologies and drives the interest. There has, has not been that much effort in the uh, oil sands in the United States because there were other more uh, easier, let's say, conventional sources of oil. But as the need has grown, people have tried to get into this, and I'm proud to say that uh, Petrotech came up with a solution. 
solution that several others have tried different ways but were unsuccessful. So, uh, yes, we're we're now an energy company that started out because we found the technology. Dr. Jerry Bailey with us, Petrotech. Uh, glad you brought up the uh, oil sands because you're right. That that has been kind of that um, shale play that people are kind of looking forward to down the line for technologies like this. And um, I wanted to ask you, and it's a two-part question, it'll be transitional. My second story I did uh, with the Bakken oil play was that uh, it wasn't an oil boom, it was a technology boom. And we talked about how the advancements of the technology really was the driving force behind uh, the Bach and shale play. The wild catting was gone. It was all pre- is like precision agriculture, but precision mining, if you will. And so as technology increases, we can extract more energy. We can harvest more from different plays, depending on where it's at. The oil sands always came up in our Williston Basin conferences quite a bit for obvious reasons, the proximity of, of Canada and, and Utah in there. Talk to me a little bit about your technology here. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this press release that you guys are talking about, you know, 99% of the hydrocarbons are being removed and that sort of thing. So talk to me a little bit about the technology and how that is integrating into these, uh, into that, that oil sands play a little bit. Well, that's uh, very true, what you say about how it developed in that regard. People knew, for instance, about the Bakken for many years, but nobody had really a reasonable technology or a, uh, uh, a adaptable source of uh, means to go after that. And then when people did start seeing the ways to uh, to use the fracking and to use horizontal wells and to do a lot of things that we hadn't been doing, then it opened that up. The same thing about the oil sands technology. People knew the oil sands for many years. In fact, both, most folks have been using a lot of those uh, sands to just put on roads to make uh, use for asphalt, uh, pave the highways, because they didn't have a good way to extract it. Our technology actually uh, does remove all of the oil. Uh, it's an environmentally uh, friendly, uh, a green technology, if you will. There is no pollution. There, there is nothing goes out into the air. The only thing that goes to the ground is is pure uh, sand. That, uh, as we like to say in my part of the country, you could probably grow tomatoes in it. You know, it's uh, it's good stuff. We're making the land better than when we started. It's covered with these black, uh, oily-looking uh, materials, and then it becomes out like, uh, becomes like beach sand. So the technology does uh, wash out the, the oil from those sands. Then we recycle our solvent in a, a closed-loop system. So we separate the oil from it and then just keep recycling and treating more ore. So the technology leads the way, and that opens up so many uh, other opportunities uh, uh, for people who have a resource but don't know how to uh, monetize. Another reason I find this story pretty exciting is, you know, for one, the um, often forgotten about oil sands that uh, is there. You know, I think there's something like 30 billion barrels that they're projecting out of there. So, I mean, this is it is, it is a good size play. It really is. And the other part that I find really interesting this is the, is the PR side of things, you know. Uh, the oil sands, obviously, the, the the name changed a decade ago to indicate the, the the first, I guess, symbolic wave of that PR change. Are you experiencing any of the positives, any of the negatives when it comes with the environmental groups? Because you just mentioned how clean this technology is. What kind of response are you getting from, you know, I'm obviously I imagine you're getting good response from the energy companies, but take it a step further, are, what, just the general public and then even the environmental groups, what kind of response are you getting from the diver- diversity of people? Yes, I can, I can address that because... Uh, uh, oil sands have gotten uh, a pretty rough rap uh, because most people that even know anything about them, they refer to what's going on in Canada. We're totally different than that. Those sands are water wet. They're using uh, steam and hot water to extract the oil, and it results in a, uh, an emulsion and a leftover sludge, and they end up with these uh, huge tailing ponds. And people look at that and they say, oh, this is an environmental nightmare, and, and they're correct. I've visited up there. I've talked to the people. I've talked to the First Nations uh, 
Indian tribes, and they're all disturbed about the environmental impact. We're different. We do not use any water. We have no uh, negative environmental impact. But that's what you have to convince people, because people are having to learn different. I, I must tell you that on the day we opened our plant, we did have some environmentalists that showed up at the gate and wanted to protest because they were concerned about what we were doing. I walked out to the gate and I spoke to some of them and I said, you know, you can you can protest if you want, but we have nothing here that causes a problem. You can read up on us on our website. And uh, it was a very polite conversation. And they uh, they got back in their hydrocarbon driven automobiles and uh, and left the site. And, uh, you know, they, it's kind of funny. They, they tend to be against it, but they're still using our product. But, no, we've not had another incident of any environmental uh, concerns or any environmentalists that have raised any concerns. In fact, we're getting a good reputation as being a, a green, uh, you know, company that produces energy. So that we're kind of winning on both fronts there, and I'm, I'm really proud that people are seeing the difference. But I would... I would definitely agree. It's been a it's been a educational process for people to see that this is something different and can be done uh, safely and cleanly, and certainly very friendly to the environment. You mentioned another thing. I think it, it's important to bring up uh, Dr. Jerry Bailey with us, Petro Tech, and you you mentioned the the oil sands Canada. Of course, that that's what I've always thought of too. And when I came across this press release about how you guys had some found some success with some completion in Utah. I forgot that there was oil sands in Utah. Talk to me a little bit about the either the geography that you're penetrating or the geography that your uh, technology can penetrate when it comes to the uh, the oil sands. Can it get up into that uh, Canadian area? Or are you just primarily in the Utah? Well, the difference there is. Uh the, the sands up in Canada are, are mostly underground and have to be, uh, literally, you have to drill wells and, as I say, and inject uh, uh, steam or hot water to loosen them up. There's a big difference there. Um, in, uh, in most of the sands in the United States, and particularly in U- Utah, which has something over 55% of all the sands, this is dry and it lays literally on the surface from uh, the surface down to two or three hundred feet. We don't do, quote, any, uh, you know, deep mining. It's literally using a front end loader to, to scoop up the, uh, the ore off the surface of the earth and just deliver it immediately into our contact tower and treat it. So it's a lot easier to do. It's a lot different. Uh, and it's not near as difficult, and it doesn't cost as much. We produce our oil for under $30 a barrel. We're talking about down around $25 compared to, you can see numbers from 50 to 60 maybe $55 a barrel up in Canada. So there's a big difference. We're, we're uh, profitable at very low oil prices, and uh, that, that really distinguishes and, and separates us from there. But I do uh, know that when I was up in Canada looking what they have, a lot of the sludge that's left much of it is piled up on the land, uh, just the surface of the earth. And our process would be able to, first we'd probably have to dewater some of it, but we could treat that and get the remaining oil out of it, a lot of which is just leaching out all over the landscape. So we're looking at that too. We've got an, uh, got an eye on that. But what we can do is uh, at low cost and uh, easy access for most of our sands, we don't have to you know, have a huge mechanical operation to do it. When you were describing that, I was just, you know, picturing a like a big payloader type of it or a crane or, you know, a scoop shovel from being a kid type of a thing in a sandbox. Um, are, do, do you guys actually have like any rigs or is it just the heavy machinery? That, no, that's exactly what we do. That's exactly what we do. Just a big funny unloader uh, that we can uh, literally just pick up tons of ore and feed it uh, on a conveyor belt, goes right up at the top of our tower. It falls down our tower. Uh, we counterflow it with our, uh, I call it our secret sauce, and uh, extract the, the oil, which goes overhead with the solvent, as I said, and then it recycles. So that's all that, that it's required to do it. So it's not uh, hugely manpower. 
power intensive. It's uh, it's it's again you know, low cost and uh, very straightforward. Not uh, not too difficult to go after. So I don't intend to just put up uh, tons of steel in the Utah desert. Although I'm sitting on top of a very lucrative uh, resource, we we have 2,000 acres there, and within that. We've had uh, reserve reports showing us at, at 87 million barrels of potential recoverable oil. 87 million barrels. So you can do the math on that. I mean, it's, it's pretty big. But my objective is really to go out and while I will continue to run the operation there, and we have on the drawing boards to go from 1,000 now to 5,000 barrels a day. Uh, but I want to put in, as I said earlier, some joint ventures or license it to other people. I've talked to many countries from uh, China to uh, Russia to Dominican Republic to Indonesia, uh, uh, it's uh, Trinidad. Many, many places have similar sands that just need some help in setting up an operation that they can do this. Because it's not only making oil out of, uh, of oily sands, but it's also a remediation effort. As I say, if you had an oil spill on the sand somewhere or on your dirt, you could very... Uh, well, use our process to clean it up. If I would have had this technology some years back when the big spill was held on, was happened on the uh, Texas Gulf Coast, uh, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, along there, uh, I think we could have gone down there and set up a small unit that what we have now. We could have cleaned up a lot of that sand that was on the beaches instead of much of it's been just bulldozed over into the dunes and the swamps, and it's still a mess. So we not only can make oil, we can be a remediation process along the way. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, you, you you seem like you can do a couple things. One is the remediation, and the other one, you know, is the extraction of energy. But at the same time, that extraction of the oil seems like you need a very specific type of uh, uh, landscape with that. So I was going to ask you, I mean, who who is your customer? Well, uh, the, the customer is... Uh, those uh, entities, whether they, whether they be private companies or uh, or uh, or countries, national oil companies that have sands that need to be remediated. Now we're talking even with some people uh, in several countries that, that have some. Uh, they're more like shale. Now we've never claimed that we can do, uh, you know, that we can attack the shale problems. But shale is nothing more than consolidated sand, if you would, and. Uh, there may be some effort there that we can do. So we're looking at different aspects. But in any case, the only way we do it, we don't claim we're a, a, a one cure for everybody or for everything. But we, we have people send us samples of their particular area or the area they are wanting to uh, to work. And then we, we do our work on their samples and we find out uh, what percentage oil they have and how well we could recover it. And that's how we, uh, you know, we develop our clientele, and we're working on that on a number of fronts right now. Okay, cool. Uh, Dr. Jerry Bailey with Petrotech. And this is, yeah, this is one of those neat uh, technology stories, in my opinion, that um, is going to just keep coming back and back and back. Because like you mentioned about how shale is essentially compressed sand, and so... You know, once you, once you figure out the technology or the secret sauce, if you will, the sky's the limits. And even in the Bakken, where I've spent the last um, five years, you know, they're still talking about they haven't even gotten over 10% with the understanding of the technology. So, I mean, they're putting out a million barrels a day and going in and doing some refracts. And the refracts, of course, they're learning some more technology as they go. So, I, I see even a third wave for you guys, which is these, you know, as people understand more of technology within these different shale plays, like you mentioned, that, that that's going to be a, a, somewhere down the line that you guys are going to probably have an additional revenue stream that'll just happen organically. Um, I, I'm, I'm not your salesman by any means, but I can see it in my head. Well, you sound like my salesman, but you, because you're correct. You have, you have the vision. Any, any technology has to have vision. People have asked me, they said... Well, you know, you're an Exxon guy, you know, you know all about oil and stuff. I've been in it for 55 years, so I've done everything from upstream, downstream. I've drilled, I've explored, I've run refineries, you know, I've done LNG, uh, I've done gas to liquids. I've seen a lot of technologies, I've seen a lot of effort, but also see and rec 
recognize that this one is something unique. And he said, but how can you be the first one? I said, it's probably the same question they asked the Wright brothers, like, is this thing going to really fly? Somebody has to be the first. Somebody comes up with something. Petrotech has come up with a technology that works and has got a lot of potential that we have yet not uh, unleashed. So uh, we're taking it uh, one step at a time. We're watching our company grow. We're being very mindful of what we're doing. And we're, um, we're talking to a lot of people. And now the people are beginning to come to us first to uh, want to inquire more. So we're, we're open about it. We'll work with any company, with any group. We're trying to look for ways to proliferate this wherever it might be applicable to the people that need it. So uh, if you're going to make energy, there's a lot of sources of energy. And they all have to be uh, utilized uh, for the good of the whole result. So uh, we're we're providing a technology that we think we can uh, be very uh, recognizable uh, to what we add to the to the uh, discussion. Dr. Jerry Bailey, uh, Petrotech. Any final thoughts? I like to give uh, guests just a final word. That way, the question isn't formed or I'm sorry, framed by me by any means. So, uh, any final thoughts? No, I, I appreciate you letting letting me tell the story. There's one thing that you'll see in the press releases, and your and your clientele, and your listeners and readers will uh, will pick up on is another thing that we've gotten going is to get involved in this new blockchain technology. We we decided to take a lead in that as well, where uh, you know we can start using uh, better means of uh, digitizing all of our results and our activities. Uh, across the uh, across the globe, so that we can be better uh, in tune and able to contact with our suppliers and with our purchasers and with our uh, operators in this business. So we've uh, we've launched an initiative where we're developing a good blockchain uh, approach, like many banks now uh, people use, and you know, uh, so many industries are are getting involved where people can join in and have access to your uh, non-proprietary data, who can do transactions across uh, international boundaries uh, in real time, that we can stop the repetitiveness of so much accounting and, and get things more uh, computerized in the system. We've already got uh, PMEX from Mexico to join in with us. We've got uh, one of the uh, uh, oil companies out of the Ukraine, which seems like a long way away, but they want to join in on this, and we're talking with others. And we're going to hopefully be uh, uh, another good leader in the technology of utilizing the, the blockchain system and the uh, cryptocurrency situation for the oil and gas industry. So that's kind of a little sideline deal, but it's going to make our business uh, more uh, cost effective. It's going to improve our bottom line. And hopefully along the way, we can we can help some more people. So that's kind of another interesting bit that uh, we're involved in at the moment. I'm glad you brought that up. I did want to ask you about blockchain, but I didn't know if it would, was appropriate uh, for the for the discussion. Um, I'm, I'm glad, and like I said, I'm really glad you 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 bringing this up because I, I did have a question. Is this something that you guys are developing is this is this your guys blockchain or is it a blockchain that you guys someone else has developed and you guys are are, are a part of no we're developing this we have uh, formed a collaboration with a group called first bitcoin capital and uh, that, there was a press release on that some months back I don't have the exact date but uh we engaged them uh, for over half a million dollars to develop this for us. And they are actively working on that where they're putting together all of the, uh, you know, the, the computer programs and uh, the structure so that there is a system where people will be able to track their product or track our product. And we, can, uh, we can sell things and, and just interact. It's not a mythical thing. People, people get uh, confused about what is this blockchain. It's nothing more than uh, I like to think of it as a railroad train going by with a lot of boxcars full of information in every one of them. And along the way, people might need to pull out something from a particular boxcar as to do with to make a sale or to make a purchase or to do some uh, service uh, work. And it, it's like a, a big file room that more than one person has access to. Everybody has access to the front door, but inside there's 
dozens of uh, file cabinets, if you will, with different information, and only certain people have keys to certain file cabinets. But among it, we can all share a lot of information and things that we now do with uh, brokers and lawyers and accountants. A lot of it can be done more expeditiously and easier. So it's our development that we're directing toward the oil and gas business. And we have uh, Deloitte, uh, the financial group out of uh, Toronto, is also giving us advice on this. So we and we've got some pretty pretty good uh, folks involved, and we're we're doing that as just another uh, uh, aspect of our business. But that you know that's a that's a subset of what we do. But it it could turn out to be a very uh, attractive thing to many companies who can just join in with us as uh, as members, if you would, of our of our blockchain system. How can somebody uh, become a part of that blockchain system or or learn more about it? Uh, do you guys have a website? Do you guys uh, direct uh, have an email address? I guess what uh, what do, do do you have something that people can find out? This collaboration we've uh, developed is being uh, uh, operated under the name of Petroblog, P E T R O B L O Q, and there is a website you can look up Petroblog. But you can also go to uh, petrotech.energy, uh, and either way, there's there's uh, comments there how you can contact and get directly into our blockchain uh, folks that are handling this, and uh, they would be glad to talk uh, uh, in detail how anyone might uh, participate. Now, again, I, I understand what's going on to the tune to where I didn't realize that this interview when when we scheduled it this morning it was going to be one of those interviews that I am going to remember for the rest of my life because you're on the forefront of two things here for, for one you're on the forefront of your proprietary um hydrocarbon you know sand oil extraction um technology I mean that's that's innovative in, in itself to the tune to where I wondered if you guys backdoored into it and then this here with the petrol block, and that's P E R P E T R O B L O Q block. Yeah. Uh, that yes. I see where you're going to be not only at the forefront on that in the energy sector, but overall in the entire industry because this is still a relatively new technology, or maybe it's not. I guess how, how much. Um, History has been involved with this for you guys to to say, you know what, there, there's enough there to m- move ahead on something like this. Uh, I, I guess is is there enough? Was there enough history to be satisfied with uh, everything, or is this kind of a, uh, you know, we're we're sticking our toe in the water a little bit? <laughs> well, it's become a it's become a catch all word, so to speak. But the the idea has been around a long time. I think banks, for one, were maybe some of the first involved. Where you go in to, uh, to seek a loan or a mortgage, you still, you were just talking to your local banker, but now they can sit there in a matter of minutes and go on their computer. They can find out your credit history and everything about you all across the world. They can contact other banks and, and see if they can't help you. Uh, I mean, if one can't help you, another can. So they've been using this uh, uh, collaborative uh, way to uh, communicate and to share information. And so the idea is not, I don't think, that new. It's just that people said, well, heck, if it can be done in one way or in one industry, it can be done in others. I saw the other day where uh, a lot of people who are involved in, in water production or water cleanup or, or water needs around the world, they're starting a water blockchain. So people have who have any, any interest in water can also get in on that and find other like minds. It's no different than the, there's... You know, industries like the uh, natural gas processors or the National Re- Petroleum uh, Refiners Association. A lot of industry groups that have always kind of cooperated and shared information. Uh, I think this is just a way to, again, bring us up more into current technology and ways to share that information and help it in our businesses. So uh, it's uh, the idea is not totally new, but we saw... Well, hey, if the oil and gas is a global industry, I mean, I buy if I buy a tanker of oil, say out of Africa, it may, it may travel up to Rotterdam and have to be checked and check the analysis, and then it's got to be shipped to Houston, and from there it gets unloaded in the tank. It's got to move from there to whatever. Uh, 
Salt Lake City or something. But with this system, you now used to use all of that took days and days because there's so many documents and people involved. And then you got to transfer the money across international boundaries. Well, if everybody can key into the same uh, digital program, I can tell you at any moment when that oil left, where it is, who's doing anything with it, uh, where is the paperwork, where are the documents, where is the money, uh, how are funds being transferred, all these things in real time. So if you just look at it, it's just a, a more efficient and more up-to-date current way to utilize uh, communication technologies that are now available. It's no wonder Utah is always projected to have the number one economy. I mean, this is uh, this is incredible stuff you guys have going there. Um, I'm I'm blown away. They're very happy to have us there. I'll tell you that uh, uh, the, the the governor and the and the state offices have been very uh, helpful and very uh, willing to support what we're doing because this is going to be uh, has already started to become a good uh, economic uh, positive for the region and. Uh, as we get larger and as other people join in with us and doing things, it's going to be good for all parties. And where are you guys based out of? Our, our office is in Los Angeles. Uh, we, we do everything out of that, that spot. Uh, I don't always stay there myself. I'm on the road quite a bit. I do a lot of public speaking and talking to people, plus I'm following our operations since our construction is there in uh, Vernal, Utah. But we, we do all of our corporate stuff out of uh, Los Angeles. And those contacts and those phone numbers and addresses also are on our, our website, uh, simply uh, petrotech.energy. And then, of course, uh, petrolblock.com, P-E-T-R-O-B-L-O-Q.com. All right. Well, this has uh, been an exciting uh, interview. I tell you, I, I enjoyed this a lot more than... Um, I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to anyway, but then it took a whole different uh, turn with uh, the new, not only the pr- pr- proprietary hydro- hydrocarbon technology, but the new uh, digital economy as we, you know, this globalization and the global energy. It's it's here. I mean, people say the global economy is coming. No, it's been here for a while now, and this is just another example. Well, people just are trying to find ways to harness it and to utilize it effectively. So, but I, if, if I sound excited, I am. I'm very passionate about this. As I say, I've been in this uh, oil and gas industry all my life, and this is one of the, you know, one of the best things to come along that I've seen. I was involved in the uh, conversion of gas to liquids, uh, GTL, they call it. So that was quite a, a, a deal to try to crack, and people were able to do that. And I said at that time, uh, we built a facility in the country of Qatar. And I said, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Well, I think uh, uh, Petrotex technology is uh, loaf number two of the sliced bread. So, you know, I think it's great. 